The Monetary Policy Committee, MPC, met on the 24th and 25th of July, 2023, against the backdrop of continued uncertainties in the global and domestic economies. This included geopolitical tensions, threats to globalization, and the multilateral economic system. On the domestic front, output growth continued at a moderate pace, while the general price level remained elevated as markets adjusted the new policies introduced by the federal government. Consequently, these developments at both the global and domestic levels continue to pose significant challenges to the policy environment. The committee assessed these developments and the outlook for the rest of the year. 11 members of the committee attended the meeting. Global economic developments. The committee reviewed developments impeding the smooth recovery of the global economy. Notable among these is the continued hostility between Russia and Ukraine as Russia reneged from further renewal of the Black Sea Agreement. This development would likely push commodity prices much higher than current levels. In addition, China's slow recovery is dampening global trade, while the increasing polarization of the global economy with several economies seeking macroeconomic alliances with the groups of BRICS countries is increasing uncertainty in the direction of trade flows. Inflation across several advanced economies has continued to moderate but remains considerably above their respective long-run objectives, even as monetary policy tightening pro progresses. In the emerging markets and developing economies, inflationary pressure remains broadly elevated, though there are signs of moderation in some countries. Global inflation is thus expected to remain elevated through 2023, despite broad measures by several central banks to ease the pressure. In the global financial markets, financial conditions remain tight and may necessitate further as monetary policy normalization progresses. Investors' preferences is thus shifting to advanced economic fixed income securities with improved yields as well as safe havens assets. The International Monetary Fund IMF in its July 2023 World Economic Outlook revised the 2023 output growth forecast for the global economy upwards to 3.2% from 2.8% in its April forecast. The improved output performance was due to the sustained resilience of the global economy to the prevailing headwinds in the first half of 2023. Global growth is, however, projected to moderate downwards to 3% in 2024. Domestic economic developments. Available output numbers from the National Bureau of Statistics, MBS, showed that real gross domestic product, GDP, grew by 2.31% year on year in the first quarter of 2023, as compared with 3.52% in the preceding quarter. While growth moderated, it has remained positive since Q4 2020. Thus, steady and positive performance was driven largely by sustained growth in the services and industry sectors, supported by broad-based measures by both the monetary and the fiscal authorities. Staff projections show that output growth recovery in 2023 would remain positive as economic agents adjust to the recent policies on zero subsidy on the price of premium motor spirit PMS and convergence of exchange rates. On price development, the committee noted the quick uptick in inflationary pressures as headline inflation year on year rose by 38 basis points to 22.79% in June 2023 from 22.41% in the previous month. This was driven by the moderate increases to both food and core components. Legacy headwinds, including security challenges in major food producing areas, high cost of transportation driven by the rising cost of energy, and inadequacies in public infrastructure continue to drive the rise in food and core inflation. Key developments that would likely sustain upward pressure on domestic prices in the short to medium term are the recent deregulation of pet petrol price and the transition to a unified and market 
determine the exchange rate. The unfolding dynamics in the monetary policy environment and the resultant pass-through to domestic prices will thus require greater collaboration between the bank and fiscal authorities. Broad money supply M3 in June 2023 grew by 24.35% year-to-date, compared with 6.7% in May, driven largely by the increase in both foreign, net foreign assets NFA and net domestic assets NDA. Money markets rates reflected the level of liquidity in the banking system. Consequently, the monthly weighted average open buyback OBB and interbank call rates decreased to 9.12 and 11.61% in June 2023 from 12.6 and 12.31% in May, respectively. In the banking system, financial soundness indicators remained stable and strong. The capital adequacy ratio, CAR, stood at 11.2%. Non-performing loans, MPLs, ratio was 41.2%. And the liquidity ratio, 48.4% as at end June 2023. In the financial market, equities remain bullish through the review period. The all share index and market capitalization increased to 60,968.27 60, index points and 33.20 trillion, respectively, on June 30, 2023. This compares with the 51,251.06 index points and the 27.92 trillion as of December 30th, 2022. This indicates continued investor confidence in the Nigerian market as investors foresee a more stable macroeconomic environment once the current policies of the bank and the federal government fully permit the economy. Gross external reserves improved marginally to 33.97 billion as of July 2023 from 33.75 billion in June 2023 as accretion to external reserve remains weak while foreign exchange demand pressures persist. Outlook. The overall outlook for the recovery of both the global and domestic economy is moderated. Uncertainties remain, and global level legacy headwinds, such as the war in Ukraine and slow recovery of the Chinese economy, as well as ongoing brixification, are key downside risks to output growth. In the domestic economy, factors precipitating the uncertainties remained with insecurity within farming communities, high prices of PMS and other energy products, as well as pressure in the foreign exchange market persist. Forecasts for key macroeconomic indicators for the Nigerian economy indicate that the economy will continue to recover moderately through 2023 to grow by 2.66%, CBN estimate, 4.2% federal government and 3.2% IMF, the committee's consideration. The committee's consideration focused on the persistent, persistent rise in inflation and its potential adverse effect on output growth and household income. The continued uptick in inflation month on month, driven by increase in both the food and core components of the CPI in the view of members remained a key challenge. The members also expressed concerns that the recent policy decisions around subsidy removal, exchange rate liberalization, and distribution of palliatives would have pass through effects to inflation. Members therefore called for decisive measures by the bank to address the likely liquidity surfeit from these developments, including using appropriate monetary policy tools and instruments. The committee urged the monetary and fiscal authorities to sustain its collaboration towards addressing the inflationary pressure and incentivize domestic investments to reduce unemployment and boost output growth. It enjoined the federal government to continue to explore policies to improve investor confidence in the Nigerian economy and paid way for foreign and domestic investments. 
Members emphasize the need to attract investments, particularly to auto manufacturing, aviation, and real industries to boost non-oil revenues. The Committee thus expressed the view that key policy mechanisms to shield the Nigerian economy from persistent global shocks and other emerging domestic shocks are urgently required for the economy to continue to post positive growth. The committee also recognized the several measures put in place by the bank to boost foreign exchange liquidity. Particularly, members were of the view that the recent policy on foreign exchange market reform would increase market transparency and encourage, encourage more foreign capital inflows. It therefore urged the bank to leverage on effective policies to attract remittances from diaspora to help moderate exchange rate pressures. The committee commended the bank's role in the effective oversight of the banking system, evidenced by the relative stability in key financial soundness indicators and resilience of the sector, despite tight global and domestic financial conditions. Members, however, noted the potential impact of the recent policy reforms on financial system stability and called on the management to act proactively to ring fence the banking system from any possible second round effects. The MPC thus urged the bank to sustain its macroprudential surveillance over the banking system. The committee's decision. Following the outlook for the domestic economy, members were of the view that the committee was confronted with only two policy options, to hold or hike the policy rates to offset the moderate increase in headline inflation. Considering the option to hold, the committee reviewed the impact of the continued rise in inflation on various macroeconomic variables, noting the potential dampening effect on output growth. Members agreed unanimously that the previous series of rate hikes had indeed greatly moderated the pace of price increases. The option to continue to hike the policy rates a bit moderately also presented a strong alternative this is premised on the expected liquidity injections into the economy from the recent policy developments and the likely impact on inflation. The committee remained cautious in arriving at a policy decision as members noted the need to continue to support investment, which will ultimately lead to the recovery of output growth. The balance of these arguments thus leaned in favor of a moderate rate hike to sustain efforts at anchoring inflation expectation narrow the negative real interest rate gap, and improve investor confidence. The MPC does resolve by majority to raise the monetary policy rate. Six members voted to raise the monetary policy rate, four by 25 basis points, two by 50 basis points. Five members voted to hold the monetary policy rate constant. All members voted to narrow the asymmetric corridor from plus 100 to minus 700 basis points at a new level of plus 100 and minus 300 basis points around the MPR. In summary, the MPR voted to raise the policy rate by 25 basis points from 18.5 to 18.75%, adjust the asymmetric corridor to plus 100 minus 300 basis point around the MPR, retain the CRR at 32.5%, and retain the liquidity ratio at 30%. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. That was Monetary Policy Communique number 149, read by the African Governor. Thank you. Mr. ADPC Fola Shonubi. We now take some questions from the media. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Sunday Michael Obu. Let me start by congratulating you on your Sorry, question. which paper? Daily Trust List. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Acting Governor, it appears in the last one year, the only response on the table has been to raise uh, interest as a response to rising inflation. Uh, my question really is, what would you recommend, not just uh, from the standpoint of the CDN, but to the government as a collective that every other party can do, you know, uh, to rein in on inflation and uh, allow the poor to breathe? Thank you. 
Good evening, Acting Governor. I'm Nancy Naji. Morning, I'm Nancy on the IC. Um, Governor, you did uh, you did speak about um, foreign exchange rate. I would like uh, for you to give an explanation concerning the convergence since the announcement from the bank. I think just a few uh, weeks ago, we've seen the seesaw uh, between the official market and uh, the parallel uh, market. Uh, I would like to know if the Central Bank of Nigeria would intervene because um, our exchange rate is now off the hooks. Is a front burner topic and hot topic right now um, for businesses. And what role exactly the central bank uh, will be playing? Is it that of a market maker role? How would you intervene? That's my question. Thank you. Good evening, Acting Governor. Sir, my name is Nduka Changing of the Nation newspaper. Uh, Mr. Governor, December is fast approaching. Please, can you give us an update on the status of um, the Nara redesign project? And then why is it that we are not seeing enough new Nara notes in circulation? Thank you very much. Thank you. We have uh, two questions from Lagos. Thank you. Komola, Banga newspaper. Sir, the Association of Mobile Money and Bank Agents in Nigeria recently announced increases in point of sales transaction charges. Citing the current economic climate in the country for their reaction, what is the CBN doing to check issues of unauthorized charges levied against customers? The second question from Lagos, Bukola Ido of the Leadership Newspaper. Acting Governor Sir, what other central banks, which other central banks mulling the idea of floating their own digital currency? What is the status of Nigerian Central Bank Digital Currency, CBDC, the e Naira? Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. D Daily Trust has asked about inflation, and that all we've been doing is hiking up the rates, and it looks as if it hasn't made much of a difference as far as inflation is concerned. The first thing I'd like to highlight is it has made um, quite a lot of difference. And I believe in previous MPCs, we had indicated and shown that every time we have um, had a rate increase, it has actually moderated the rate of inflation. But that's not all that we've been doing. And during this MPC, we had quite a lot of time talking about inflation, talking about the various tools and mechanisms that we could use to manage inflation. We agreed that one of the key challenges now was the liquidity overhang, and we needed to look at the various tools we had. As a matter of fact, in the communique, you would have noticed that we made reference to that same fact. So in addition to interest rate hikes, we've also come up with various ways to um, tighten the liquidity, because we believe that if the liquidity surfeit actually runs across not just um, inflation, but also has some impact on the exchange rates and other parts of the economy. So I can confirm that it is not only rate change that we're looking at to moderate inflation. We're looking at every tool in the box that would help us reduce liquidity and that should have a positive impact on reining in inflation. From money line, the convergence, and use the word which is not exactly right, unification. We're not trying to unify any rates. We believe that we need to encourage the market to be more efficient and to be more effective, and that takes a bit of, of time. Um, some of the volatility you've seen over the period has been driven by that same fact, that the market needs to find its level, and also the reality that um, there's pent up demand, which current supply may not be sufficient for. And as we ease and satisfy the pent up demand, we begin to see a more efficient market that runs. But you also need to understand that the dynamics of pricing in the market, and we, we feel we should actually stop calling it the iron E because it is now much more than the iron E. For us, it's a market where everybody and anybody through the licensed 
institutions can participate. So we expect that over time, sooner rather than later, the volatility you are seeing would normalize. The role of the central bank is to intervene and keep the market at a fairly stable level. We have our views at, as to what that level is. And as the market continues to oscillate around that level, if there's a need for us to intervene, either by buying or selling, that's the role of the central bank. We will continue. We have started intervening, and we've been doing it for a while, and we will continue to intervene to bring the market to the levels that we believe it should be. Right now, in the short run, these uh, volatile times are expected, but we expect them to moderate sooner rather than later. The nation asked about updates on the Naira redesign. When the currency is printed and sent out, it is expected that it will go through a number of cycles and then over time will become one and then would be replaced. That's what we're doing. We had to put out or re-put out old notes. And as they're coming in, they're being processed and returned to us as not issuable. We're then bringing out and replacing them with the new notes. We believe that we have an optimal level of the currency out there. So more of what's being done is replacement to keep the level rather than just putting out money out there. And that is seen by the fact that the banks, whenever they come to us for, for notes, we provide it to them. If it wasn't enough, they would be asking us for much more. If it was too much, they'd be dumping that much more on us. So we'll slowly, and over time you will see, have the old notes replaced out of the system uh, with the new notes that will be the norm. And that will be out of practice, not fanfare. You'll just see it slowly um, morph in, from old to new. The question from Vanguard was around the charges that the POS operators um, have announced increases. The model that the central bank runs is that we do not deal directly with the POS operators. We have um, companies that, that we license, super agents, and the super agents then have agents amongst which are the POS operators that have the point of sale devices. We, are, we have regulated prices with the super agents and it's their responsibility to enforce those prices amongst the agents that are working for them. So we have informed and reminded the super agents as to what those charges are. And whenever or wherever we find agents that are responsible for behavior, not just on charges, but behavior in general, that is not in line with the rules of operation, we actually sanction the super agents because they are the primary um, entities that we have licensed. So whenever we have such situations, please let us know. We're improving our consumer protection methodology for receiving um, complaints from the public, either about what the banks are doing or have done, and will of course cover, cover any other um, incidences like the POS charges that you're talking about. And that would help us know what is going on, and we will sanction those that err in that regard. Leadership asks about the digital currency and what's happening to it. We continue to learn and we continue to tweak and we continue to change the model. Uh, we have over 20 or around 25 million people who are registered and have wallets, but we haven't seen the level of activity that's commensurate with those number of people. So we continue to talk to them. The volumes increase and we learn with each passing day. We are reviewing the model and we think soon, definitely before the end of the year, you'll see significant growth and changes because the feedback we've gotten from the public and the marketplace has been distilled and we're listening to them and we believe it's going to have an impact 
on the adoption, and then maybe we'd have less new Naira notes to print. Thank you very much.